everybody. Welcome to The Game Plan. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at Verified Investing, coming to you live from Verified Investing Studios. We have a lot to cover today. Solar eclipse. We had the earthquake on Friday. It's Mercury retrograde. We're going to look at charts. Are crazy things going to happen this week and into the rest of the month? I say yes. We're going to get right to it. All right. Oh, right to them. Not bad. Good teamwork. Okay, guys, I know you couldn't see, but uh, Tim caught it there right behind the camera. All right, so let's get right into the charts. Now, the first thing we're going to do, we go to our homepage on Verified Investing, where everything you need to know about the price action is going to happen. So we're going to start right here with the market blast. Let's go right there. We're going to see exactly the headlines of the day. And what we can do is scroll down here and see. Now, listen, not a lot of economic data yet. But this week, guys, check it out. The CPI data on Wednesday is going to be huge. And then bank earnings Friday. Friday bank earnings before the market opens. That'll be kicking off earnings season. So right off the bat, what do we see here? We see while the latest jobs report showed massive hiring of 300,000, and we got this number on Friday, the markets actually rallied on this number. Very interesting price action. The government did most of the full-time hiring uh, and workers, full-time workers actually fell. So this is a really important stat here, guys. In fact, I'm going to jump back to the homepage because I have a chart on a macro Monday here to show you guys in regard to, to this. So what you can do is, by the way, homepage, you can scroll down. We have verified pro charts, stocks and ETFs for crypto over here and over here. But what I'm going down to is economic charts right here. Now, on the economic charts, I got to show you this, right? So um, what we're going to look at here, in fact, is a chart of actually I think I posted it right up here decrease in full-time workers so if we go and scroll down to this article we can see this from the Federal Reserve website and what we can see here guys is this is your full-time workers and you can see every recession you get this dump out of full-time workers and then obviously as you exit the recession it comes back there's COVID, there's the resurgence of full-time work, but look at what's going on right here. We're starting to see the full-time workers going negative. So this is where it just drives me nuts. You see these headline numbers, right, that says, oh, 300 new jobs created. Well, yeah, but what kind of jobs are they? Are they real jobs or are they, well, and listen, they're real jobs, but I guess my point is, are they full-time or are they part-time? Are people able to find full-time work? And this is telling us that full-time work is decreasing, even though the amount of people with full-time or with work are increasing. All right, so that's a very important point. What I want to show you next here, guys, is another key stat here. Take a look at this, going down to economic charts right here. The government keeps hiring offsetting job losses. So on this chart, check this out, guys. What we have here is, this is incredible, because here's the jobs from the government. Look at this over here. Look at this. Look at this, like up and to the right, up and to the right in terms of government hiring. Now, again, we know that the U.S. deficit is continuing to soar, adding a trillion dollars in debt every three months. Well, there you go, guys. Hiring continues from the government. So you have these two factors starting to emerge where we basically are seeing you have you have essentially full-time work declining, part-time work increasing, and then the government here is offsetting a huge amount of the private sector by increasing their hiring. Listen, my goal here from Verified Investing and, and the mantra of Verified Investing is all about truth and data. So it's not about spinning the truth. It's about just showing you guys the data. And then again, you guys can make your own assumptions, your own, um, you know, kind of organizational ideas out of that data. But I want to present to you the facts here in the game plan. And again, that's the idea behind verified investing. Okay, a couple other things here, guys, to go down to. I just want to show this real quick. Um, if we go to this, this is one of my big takeaways from research I was doing this weekend. This is a chart, again, of full-time workers. And this is that same chart, but what we can do is we go back to basically the 1970s and look at how the full-time workers declined in this recession and then popped. And then here's another recession, we declined slightly. Here's another recession, we declined slightly. Another recession, we declined slightly. Now, as we get to the 2000.com bubble, we had the same drop. But from the dot-com bubble, you had the new mandate. Now, the new mandate for the Federal Reserve, the dual mandate, came about in 1977. 
But between 1977, which was here, they didn't have to do a lot of stimulus. Starting in the dot-com collapse, it was kind of the first time the retail investor could buy online, right? E-Trade, uh, TD Ameritrade, I still remember, I started trading in 1999 myself, $30 a trade, $30 to buy, $30 to exit. That's what it cost me uh, on the online platform. Now, once we got into that recession, the Federal Reserve, with their dual mandate, said, listen, we cannot allow unemployment to stay down so low or unemployment to stay low. So they started major inter intervention, major Federal Reserve intervention. And my thesis here, guys, is that the more Federal Reserve intervention, the worse the recessions that we get from them. Now, if you look, look at the amount of time between recessions. They go longer and longer because the drug high is becoming longer and longer, meaning like between 2000 and 2008, that was more normalized, and we obviously had the fall. But it's still, if you look at historic levels, if you go back here, it was basically every four to six years you had a recession, but it was always a mild recession, obviously, in, uh, except for the Great Depression way back in the 1929. But again, we've talked about how many of the things that were going on in 19, the 1920s are very similar to what's going on now. All right, but the point is, again, as the Fed intervenes more and more, you get these bigger dips. These are much harsher recessions. And the thesis, again, is if you go back before the dual mandate, the Federal Reserve only had to make sure that the banking system was stable. That's all they had to do. They didn't have to worry about unemployment. And when you had the Fed not intervening, you would have a normal cycle, like a rolling hill, the ups and the downs of an economy. But there was no cliff dive. With the Fed intervening with the dual mandate, having to always push unemployment, kind of like get the numbers of people back to being employed, you have them having to pump more and more drugs into the system, and it creates, when we have crashes, much greater drops. And again, my biggest fear, and this is what I've talked about, is that you've had more stimulus before COVID and after COVID than we have ever seen ever in the history of this world, right? And so the question I have is when we finally get to that recession, what kind of recession it is, all right? So again, little things like this, and again, you can dive into all of this and more on the Verified Investing homepage, guys. And again, just so much quality. You can see right down here, these are the earnings for the week. Early in the week is quiet. We have Tilray, we have Delta. Tilray's Tuesday morning, that's a marijuana company. Again, I follow it because sometimes you get big moves there. Delta Airlines reports pre-market on Wednesday. Uh, pre-market Thursday, Constellation Brands, CarMax, and Fastenal. Fastenal is a good one for traders. It tends to move pretty big on earnings. And then Friday, look at this. J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, City, Progressive, State Street. All of these companies starting and then next week even more earnings. Over here, the big data is going to be CPI. CPI here forecast at 0.3% month over month. Last was 0.4%. And then year over year, guys, 3.7% versus 3.8% um, on the last, uh, last month, I should say. Next, we want to quickly look at the heat map. This is the stock heat map from Friday. So it's not, you know, again, this won't update till 9.30 p.m. But look at crypto. We're going to touch on crypto in just a minute. But look at the strength in crypto today. A lot of green here. Bitcoin now back to about $72,000 per coin. Lastly, this is one thing I want to show you guys. Here is your Fed Watch tool updated every day for you guys. The greed and fear for stocks, greed and fear for uh, crypto. But this, this is important, guys. If we look at this, what do we have here? We have now the market is no longer pricing in a, a cut from the Federal Reserve in June. Here's your June meeting, June 12th. Look at this. It used to be gr uh, blue here. Now it's blue here, meaning that there's a higher probability of no rate cut in June versus a rate cut. That's the first time it happened. I think it happened just after the jobs report was released. All right, so we're going to keep an eye on that, guys. But again, very important data. Next, I want to do the drawing. You guys know I said on Friday we would give away the uh, winning trader series. Again, that's over $5,000 uh, course. It's 19 hours, three courses divided up into 19-hour periods, or, or I should say together they're 19 hours. And it's everything that I have up here given to you guys. So we're going to run this right now and see who did end up or who does end up getting the winning trader series for free here. Here we go, guys. And we'll do another spin, by the way, in just a little bit. 
All right. Here we go. All right. Vlad Ross Solov, 4273. There you go, buddy. Congratulations. That is a winning trader series. Reach out to Lawton at Verified Investing to get access to the winning trader series. He'll set you all up. But congratulations, buddy. That's a great one. And I did say we talked about Kitco Silver, 10 ounces of silver. And I just want to make you guys aware that on that, if, no, if it hasn't landed on that by Friday, that's what we're giving away, 10 ounces of silver on Friday. A 10 ounce, it's, it's actually in, in Bitcoin form. It's really, really cool for you guys that are crypto lovers. Um, it's just a cool coin, 10 ounces of silver, but it looks like a Bitcoin. Okay, so let's talk some charts here, guys. Boeing is down here today on, on another mishap midair. Something came off one of the engines. It hit the wing. I mean, it's just this, this company, I tell you, they, they just literally keep flubbing it. Part of it may not be the company. It may be the maintenance that the airline's doing on these uh, air, airplanes. But either way, the stock is lower today. If we take a look pre-market, let's bring up our pre-market data and take a quick gander. The stock is down a little bit, trading at 181.40. You can see the little bit of a drop here on the back of that news. That's not that big of a drop, though. To me, I'm starting to see somewhat of an immune, immune response to this bad news, meaning that initially when these things happened, you'd see Boeing down 3, 5, 7%, right? Now this is basically down 1% pre-market. It's not a big move. Now, what that tells me is that the sentiment may be starting to change. So what we see is on this chart, right, we had this big wet, this big channel, right, big channel here. We broke below it. We kissed our double bottom here, this pivot low right down here, and we've gotten a bounce. If we can get bad news like this on Boeing, and again, you know, thank goodness no one was hurt in this situation, but if we can see it not make a lower low or just a double bottom, there might be a buying opportunity. It might tell us that investors are now saying, you know what, we're used to this. Boeing's at a level where it just makes sense fundamentally, then it may become a good opportunity on the long side. All right, a couple other stocks in the news, or at least trading here. We have a AMD trade here as a potential. This is more of a day trade, guys. The stock is down pre-market. I've already marked it up on my chart. If we flip here and show our pre-market data, we can see that AMD was trading down to 167. It's back to 169 pre-market. And you can see it had a little dip and it's coming back. And by the way, the S&P futures are trading up here. But again, just to note that, I do have a level on the daily. If it flushes today, there's a major gap fill at 164 that I'd be interested in. You can see it right down here. And again, look at that move there. The big reversal candle last Thursday, which by the way, that reversal is still a huge technical issue for the bulls that reversal again on friday he excuse me on thursday heavy volume big reversal non-stop institutional selling it has to be kept in mind okay so that's what we have there we'll watch that on amd let's go quickly to the u.s dollar chart the u.s dollar is still holding its confirmed breakout i love how the charts just reinforce what i teach you guys in these game plans so what do i mean by that well we had the close above the confirmation right there the move higher, and then the retrace to the scene of the crime. What happened there? We got to bounce off of that. You guys see how that works? So again, what I always tell you guys is when, if and when you learn all the nuances of the confirmation signal, which are taught in the Winning Trader series, you can see that, again, when you're bubbling up against a level, you break out. For me, I don't buy up here when it, when it confirms, right? Because you've already gone from here all the way up to here. There's too much risk. Instead, I just sit back and I wait for the retrace to the scene of the crime and buy there. So the idea is that you don't want to buy here when it confirms, even though it goes a little higher, just wait for the better entry. Now, again, the probabilities of a retrace to the scene of the crime, it's about 70 to 75%. So there's a chance you'll miss it. But for me as a technician and a trader, I'd much rather miss a trade than get in bad entries. Listen, bad entries are part of the game, right? There's no one out there that can honestly tell you guys that they don't have a bad entry because the markets will do what they want to do. All we can do is put the probabilities on our favor. But again, the best thing to do is be patient, sit back as a trader, be unbelievably disciplined. Ahead of the trade, say, this is where I want to enter. If it doesn't get there, let the trade go by because you know what? There's always another trade. I've never been in a scenario where it was like the last trade on earth and that was it and there was no other trades, right? Okay, so the dollar again continues to hold the breakout here. If we look at yields, yields are now above this 4.4%. Now we did close above right here. We did not confirm. If we close up here, we will confirm the breakout 
on the 10-year yield. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, it means we're likely going higher, right? Now, you might have a retrace to the scene of the crime, but ultimately, we're probably going higher in yields. I do have a next level here at around 4.54%. That comes from this little pivot right down here, where you can see we went up, we went down, and then we went up, and then we came here, and then we broke down. So what that tells me is when you have a pivot and then sideways chop, that's an area of resistance on the way back up. So you're looking at resistance on the 10-year right there. Again, you can see how everything is very fluid, right? We just talked about how the Fed, the Fed watch tools no longer pricing in a cut. And therefore, that means that yields have to go up and adjust to no cuts in June and maybe less cuts expected over the rest of the year and into next year. So it's all kind of interconnected here in the system. All right, so again, just some interesting stuff there that I'd like to talk about. I do want to get into some commodities in just a second, but just bringing us back to center screen here, I do want to just thank Lux Algo, guys. So exciting to work with them, continuing to work with Lux Algo. You can see the link just below this video if you want to check out what they offer, but they offer some pretty darn cool stuff. So I do want to just thank them as being a sponsor of the game plan on the end of Verified Investing. Uh, someone last, I think it was a week or two ago, won a whole year of Lux Algo there. I believe it was. And again, we're going to take 30 seconds to thank them, then get right into the commodities and Bitcoin chart. Take it away. Have you considered enhancing your trading experience? We have an amazing tool for you. Lux Algo creates next-gen trading indicators to help the world understand the markets in a smarter way. They have the largest user profile on TradingView and are the only official Discord partner in the technical analysis space. Lux Algo Premium operates seamlessly with top platforms, such as TradingView and Discord, making it the perfect tool for every trader. Take your trading analysis to the next level with Lux Algo. Please visit the description below and sign up for Lux Algo today. All right, guys, we're back. I, I forgot to do the spin before the little break, so we're going to do it right now. Let's see what is getting given away tomorrow. Oh, 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 one minute scalpel getting given away, guys. Beautiful. And again, this is Dr. B. He's a verified investing pro. And again, guys, this course alone will change everything you see on the one minute chart. It will change your ability to make money. It's incredible. You got to check this out. Again, if anyone out there, if you're not, if you haven't won, I don't know if it's up for sale yet, even on our website, but if it's not, it should be up today. Amazing course. Literally, I have started to use the one minute more and more because of this course, and I've made money on the back of this. Great course. All right, let's go right over here, guys. Let's go to our chart of Bitcoin. Now, what the heck is going on with Bitcoin? Well, so we've talked about how you have a chart of Bitcoin. We closed below this line. Did you confirm? And the answer is no. I talked about it, in fact, last Friday. We talked about, listen, guys, you haven't confirmed, so the bias is still to the upside. That's exactly what price has done. Saturday, Sunday, and today, Monday, we've gone up. Now, we do have resistance coming up right here at double top. That is going to be around 73,800. So again, that will be a level to watch on this chart, 73,800. We've gotten very close, but we haven't fully tagged it. The other thing I want to show you guys is as a technician, we have to be flexible in terms of uh, where our charts are, where our trend lines are drawn. I want to show you a new trend line that actually is even more impressive. So what we do is take a look. I'm taking this high here and I'm going to connect it to this dip low exactly to that low. If I extend that trend line out, look at the line I get, right? So again, here we have another trend line, right, where we essentially go right to the lows and it gives us more credence as to why we hit this area and we have bounced. So just to reiterate, Bitcoin is still holding the major zone of support. I would say all of this in here is zone of support. As long as that holds, the bias remains upside with resistance at uh, 73,800 right up there. If you break 73,000, then you have upside. There's basically open air. It's breaking through the ceiling. You have open air potentially to 77 to 80,000 on Bitcoin. If it comes down and breaks this zone and confirms, now you're in trouble. Now Bitcoin would be in trouble. But again, just watch this zone. Above this zone, bullish. Below this zone, with confirmation, 
bearish. Remember that confirmation, guys. It's a game changer. Again, unbelievable game changer. All right, let's quickly go to Ethereum's chart real quick. Ethereum was kind of going sideways for some of the weekend, then yesterday started to pop up. Look at where Ethereum has gone into. So first of all, we have this long-term trend line. This is a great trend line, right? It even goes back further, but right here to right here, right through this zone, here and here. So again, you have to know your levels. It's, it's, it's above a level is bullish, below a level is bearish. It's really that simple in that respect, assuming you use confirmation. Now we've confirmed to the upside, so we know this is confirmed support. If it confirms to the downside, now it becomes confirmed resistance and price likely goes down. Where are we right now? Ethereum is at short-term resistance right here. You can see a little top here, 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 and then we're right into that level. If, if, if Ethereum can break through this level, you do have the potential to go back to that 4,000 or just above 4,000 double top. Same thing, guys. I would maintain a neutral to positive bias as long as you stay above this trend line, above this trend line without confirming below. If you confirm below, then honestly, I think you're going back to 2,700 on Ethereum. Looking at gold, guys, gold again is into my level. So you remember I talked about this major level on gold. So let's take a look. If we go to our monthly chart, which is what we're on, and we zoom out, take a look what line we have and where it comes from. And I called this, I think about two weeks ago, we talked and I said, guys, your first level of resistance on gold, and you guys know I'm a huge gold gold bull, right? But I'm still, a, I'm still an honest player in that, you know, this is resistance. So I actually am looking to potentially short gold today. Um, I've talked to my commodities. I have a commodity service now, commodities and miners. We're looking at some key levels. I've already posted up some key potential opportunities here. But basically what we see here on the chart is we have this line from 1980 to this line right here to this line is where we're hitting now. You should get some sort of pullback. And when I say should, what does that mean? It means probabilities, right? So the probabilities now favor a little bit of a check back. For me as a swing trader, that's perfect for a potential short. If you're a longer-term investor, you don't even care about that, in my opinion. You're just like, listen, I, oh, I'm looking five years out, three years out, whatever. It's going to go higher, and I agree with you on that. But again, a little check back on this chart, maybe back to these highs right here, that might be possible in this scenario. So again, keep an eye on that, but I do think we're into resistance. Remember, it's probabilities. So probabilities of a pullback, about 70% chance here. That still leaves 30% chance that it could just blow right through and keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny, right? Okay, next up, silver, guys. Remember, silver confirmed <coughs> excuse me, a breakout last week. It was an inverse head and shoulder breakout. So if we look here real quick, what we can see again is that inverse head and shoulders. Here's your shoulder, head, and shoulder. And then basically, if you calculate it out, the, the first target is that $30 level. Now listen, is silver short-term extended like gold? Yes, it might want to retrace to the scene of the crime. That's where I would be a buyer. Now that it's confirmed to the upside, this now becomes confirmed support right around 2550 to 26 currently tw trading at 2766 so watch for that opportunity but i still think eventually silver's at 30 bucks and probably eventually much much higher let's look at oil here real quick oil was down overnight this was actually pretty remarkable uh oil again friday we had a rollover late in the day it started sharply lower this is the 10 minute chart so i'm giving you kind of play by play in the overnight we dipped lower, it came up, and now we've recovered. And essentially, we're back to where we were at the end of Friday, right around 86, 80, 87. So again, it's recovered. The question is, can it take out this short-term high or not, right up here around 87.50 to 88? But right now, you would say this is now into resistance on an intraday basis with this sideways chop right in that range. If we look at the daily chart, remember, it did confirm above those key lines, right? So if you look at the down sloping trend line here, and you have to respect it, like it is what it is, right? So here we have this down sloping trend line right there from the highs going back to 2022 through this high, through this high, and we have now confirmed, which means a pullback to about 83 is now major support on oil. By the way, I got to show you this chart real quick. Uh, we'll, we'll go to natural gas as our last chart, but I just want to show you this. You know, everyone's saying like, oh, inflation's not that bad. This is the DBC, which is the Invesco DB Commodity Index Tracking Fund. This, this tracks like sugar, cotton, oil, nat gas, gold, silver, a lot of the commodities. 
Look at what's going on here, guys. Look at this move. Look at that. So again, when we're talking about inflation, I think we all see it, right? If you go to the store, I mean, heck, where was I this weekend? But like literally something that used to be this big was now like this big and they were charging the same price for it. I think they call that shrinkflation. But in either case, inflation, there's no doubt about it. Look at the copper chart. Look at all these charts. Inflation is starting to bubble up again, and we have to be aware of that going into some of this economic data. Lastly, guys, natural gas having a beautiful little move here. Short term, here's your little wedge pattern. We've broken above the wedge pattern there. We consolidated for a few days, right? What kind of pattern is this? That's a little bullish flag pattern. Usually it goes like that. I'm expecting that type of move on natural gas. I think we go to 205, and then if that breaks, you go to $2.30. Eventually, we could actually see $3 again on this. I do think that is a possibility. All right, guys, on that note, I think that's about where we're going to end it for today. I get to wind up here, and uh, hold on, let me do my Babe Ruth. All right, buddy, give it to me. Have a good one, guys. Ooh. <laughs>